G'day, fellas. Welcome to a casted game between Mido playing his famous Dutch and his opponent on the Russians. Water bottle user 4. I've not seen water bottle user 4 before. I suspect he may be a Smurf, but I'm unfamiliar with the name. So we'll have to wait. We'll have to see. This is an interesting matchup. A little bit difficult for the Russians, I would say. Primarily because Russians are a bit of a one-trick pony. When it comes to the Russians and the way that they play out, the Russians are sort of only really able to do one strategy, and that's early pressure. And if there's one thing that the Dutch are good against, it's early pressure. The Dutch have got a lot of options when it comes to dealing with early pressure, whether that's opening stable and a bank wagon, or whether they just put up four banks in their base, get them up by 5 minutes 30, and then send town militia afterwards. It's uh, it's one of those things where the Dutch deal with, uh, with this quite well. Now, let's talk a little bit about this map. This map is Great Plains. It's a map that you would definitely be familiar with if you played the original game. But in the definitive edition... It's been out of favor for a little bit, but it's back. And it's more beautiful than ever. Great Plains is looking absolutely great. So it's uh, it's it's really been fixed up. And uh, it's, it's great to have it back in the map pool. There's a, a lot of new additions. So we've got things like the gold mine uh, at the bottom. Sometimes it spawns at the top instead. Also around the edges of the map, we've got the treasures. So the small beavers that spawn. So you can see there's 30 coin, 30 coin, another 30 coin treasure down here. Another 30 coin over here. Plenty of uh, little beavers around the edge of the map. And it's got some, some nice treasures on it still. So we do see that famous... I'll, I'll look for it. It's uh, it's the best treasure in the game, arguably. I don't think it's actually spawned this time. So it is two coyotes and a uh, and one of these guys here. An outlaw rider. And it's 110 food. It is a really good treasure. Because essentially, it's like it's a, it's a two coyote treasure for 110 food. Because you crack shot the outlaw rider. And then you kill the two coyotes. So it's... An absolutely uh, great treasure. So we'll tune in with Mido. We'll see what he's up to. Mido now moving across the map over towards this uh, 75 coin treasure. Now he's do going for an 11 villager age up. So picking up a couple of nice treasures in the early game. Going to enable him to do that. So 11 villager age up is... is in, in my opinion, it is the best age up possible for, for, the, uh, for the Dutch player. It's difficult though. Because when you're going for an 11 villager age up... You can't always guarantee that you're going to be able to do it idleless. But one of the things we do see is Mido is putting his age up in queue, going for the quartermaster and getting this age up in queue before he uh, he's, he goes idle. So impressive stuff from Mido. Picking up that uh, 100 wood on the ground. Also grabbing that 75 coin treasure, which means he's not going to be idle when he, uh, when he finishes his transition period. And let's talk a little bit about why this is so strong. So we've got water bottle user 4, who hasn't aged up yet. Okay, Mido's going to be ahead of him. And he's going to be ahead of him by a mile. It means things like 700 wood is going to come in earlier than it normally would. Normally, 700 wood would be hitting the ground at about 4 minutes 50. But now, 700 wood is going to be hitting the ground a lot sooner than what it normally would because Mido's aged up by cutting a villager. And he doesn't really get punished for that. There's nothing bad that's going to happen to him about that. It's it, Essentially, he gets to do that for free. He, his game begins... 25 seconds earlier because he's, he's been able to get good treasures at the beginning of the game. So it's an absolutely uh, huge part of, of why Dutch is strong at the moment because oh, they can do this early age up and get uh, their ball rolling much sooner with the 700 wood. Hello? We see the envoy moving across the map. He's doing a great job of scouting out. He knows where all the resources are. Take a look how rich and, uh, and vibrant this is right now with all these resources around this area. We take a look and see. There's one, two, three, four, five hunts. So you could basically put down a, like a blockhouse right here and grab this hunt and you would have five hunts behind you. Oh my God, look exactly where Water Bottle User 4 is going. Water Bottle User 4, looking like he's heading out in this direction, going to be potentially grabbing some of those hunts as well. We look over towards the south of the map and we just see it's kind of void of, of any resource. So you really wouldn't, wouldn't want to be forwarding over here. Sure, it looks like a nice spot. There's some beautiful trees here and, and don't those trees look absolutely marvelous next to the... Oh, you guys see the fish? Nice little fish jumping out of the pond right now. What is that? What do you guys think that is? Is that a cod? I think it might be a cod jumping out. Just, I might pause it. Next time I see it jump out, we're going to try and identify the fish. Here we go. Let's see. Oh my God, some birds are coming in as well. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here it comes. I, I'm, I'm smelling it. Might have reached the commerce age, but we're more interested in the fish. Where's the fish? Fish, come back out. Okay. <laughs> we, we can play this game forever, but I think we're just going to have to leave it. Uh, you know, the moment that we zoom out... Oh, there! I knew it! The mo there's a moment that we zoom out, they, they start jumping. It's always the way that it is, isn't it? So, water bottle user for now going up with the quartermaster as well. 
dropping down a, uh, a forward blockhouse in the north of the map. So exactly where we expected it. Envoy going to be getting taken out by Timothy Atlasov. We look over at Mido. We see what he's up to. So Mido dropping down that second bank already. We're at 4 minutes and 20 seconds. He's sending in 700 wood. So this 700 wood normally would be arriving about 4 minutes 50. And we see it arriving. It's going to be in about 4 minutes 30, I think, at this point. Maybe 4 minutes 35. So really quite early. And when you're talking about like a, a Russian early pressure, which has been scouted by Mido, that makes all the difference. That extra 15 seconds is huge. That extra 15 seconds is like you know, a bank that could go up, a barracks that could go up, a market that could go up, a wall that could go up, a, a skirmisher batch that could be completed, a villager that can get inside a town center, extra 15 seconds of gathering. There's so many things that that 15 seconds could buy you at this level where you're talking about the very top players for anybody unfamiliar. Mido is an incredibly talented player. I think he currently sits in the top 10. He's, uh, he's very recently coming off a win in one of the most, uh, one of the biggest tournaments that we've had. We've had the TAC Cafe Cup so he's, uh, he's been very impressive and absolutely beautiful base building from Mido. I just love this kind of stuff that we're seeing out from him with the walls. Uh, looks like he's got a little bit of a gap in the wall here. So Mido, you're going to have to fix that one up. But for the most part, this this just, this is this is textbook. This is just absolutely beautiful stuff. And now we've got the uh, the market coming out. Uh, hunt in a, in a little bit of a poor position. I mean, ideally this hunt would be sitting right here, but it's not a big deal. I mean, it's one shot away from being in the perfect position. There, there we go. There we go. Mido, not, not too fussed about that. Now, we're at 5 minutes 30. We're going to do a quick stock take. Three banks. Fourth bank about to go up with the bank wagon. We'll take a look over at his opponent. Water bottle user 4. He's, he's just doing his own thing. He's dropping down a, uh, a a second block house at this point. We'll take a look. Does he have steel traps? He's got steel traps. Okay, we've started to see Russia do this a little bit more. So Russia have been going for a bit, a bit of a timing push. It's been working. We've seen players like... I can't remember the name of the, the player exactly, but uh, one of the things that we see is, is a big timing push with Cossacks and Muskets and Strelots. And it comes in about eight minutes. So not a huge amount of pressure in the early game that we would typically see from a Russian player. We can see that he's got 700, 500 uh, uh, coin in the bank right now. So a huge amount of coin... I don't know exactly what he's going to be doing with that. I guess double racks or double uh, blockhousing potentially is, is what we're going to be looking at. Uh, Mido, on the other hand, though, he's got his four banks up, dropping down his fifth bank now. And he's not worried. You can see, as, as I mentioned earlier in the game, uh, so he's just going to be sending through town militia and he's going to be fine. He just, he goes to the fortress age with his town militia and he's absolutely Gucci. Mido now realizing that there's a wall here, Hello. walking a villager through it and then just dropping a, a, a wall down, uh, a, a nice little pillar. So absolutely great stuff from Mido. And he's got all the resources that he needs in his base. It looks like he, he's, uh, he's destroyed another wall here, potentially. And dropping down the pillar. You can see he's trying to get that villager through just to test it. Uh, Hello? You, you can see the way he brings his villagers up here. And really just testing the gaps in his walls just to make sure that Cossacks can't get through. It's important for him to be able to get, do that. Now we've got... Keep in mind we've got town militia in here. Now he's got... 10 villagers in here, or 9 villagers rather, because that's going to be the perfect amount that you need to one-shot the Russian musketeers, okay? 121 damage to kill a single musketeer with 120 health. And that this is why this matchup is a little bit more difficult for the Russian player. They get their musketeers are one-shot by Mido. So Mido now looking like he's got walls are going to be opened up, but he's taken out so many musketeers at this point. And ideally, he just wants to be able to protect his villagers. He doesn't have his great coats in just yet. I would like to see him grab his great, great coats just to be a little bit safer. Looks like the Cossacks are going to be able to, to take down a uh, the native Tomahawk and just be able to do a bit of idling. He's not actually going to be able to pick up any villagers. Oh, I say that, but the first... Oh, Mido just managing to get that villager inside. It looks like this villager will, will probably be going down. I think Mido may have forgotten about it. So unfortunately, losing out four villagers, or losing out one villager, the fourth Cossack on the back line. Not sure if you guys saw it, but uh, doing a little bit of a uh, little bit of a dance. And now Mido moving, or oh, uh, water bottle user four coming in with his uh, with his musketeers, and we can see them just getting picked off. You know, Mido's in a position where he could call colonial militia if he wanted. He could call the big batch. He could call the small batch if he wanted. He doesn't need to, and he knows he doesn't need to. Because his town center is able to one-shot these muskets. We can see still taking out these muskets right now. And the Russian player just in a bit of a difficult spot. This matchup, I often talk about it as a difficult matchup for the Russian player to be able to overcome the Dutch turtle in the beginning of the game. And we really see why Mido is demonstrating that just per absolutely perfect textbook Dutch turtle. It is impressive stuff from Mido. Now going with religious freedom. I want to talk about this card. 
A lot of people take this card because they think it's really good to get the bank limit increase. That's not the case. That is not the case, my friends. Church now going to... Oh my god, I can't believe this church has been found. This is not good for Mido. This is not good for Mido. The church has been found down to the south. It's, it's not a big deal. Mido is going to be able to rebuild this church relatively quickly. But let me talk about this, okay? You take a look at Mido's deck, okay? He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards in the Fortress Age, okay? Typically with a Dutch player, you would see all 10 cards used. Now, when you send Religious Freedom, okay, that's a Second Age card, a Colonial or a Commerce Age card. But what it does is it enables your church Commando. to research the Ward Gelder Improvement, which sends five Stradiots for a thousand coin. Now, a Mercenary Shipment is a thousand coin, and it's in the Fortress Age, and it sends units from the home city. It does exactly the same thing as a Mercenary Shipment. So you look at the Manchu, it's a thousand coin, it takes a single card to get there. So as a Dutch player, what you're doing is you're sending a mercenary shipment, but you're banking it up. You're keeping it there for whenever you need it. You can overpop with it. It doesn't need any form of uh, housing space or anything like that. And what it enables you to do is, so let's say your opponent pushes in underneath the town center. You can have your church up anywhere on the map. Let's say you're building your church down over here. Your opponent pushes in underneath your town center. At any point that you want, you can call those Ward Gelder, as long as you're in age three. And that's part of the reason why the church card for the Dutch is incredibly important, especially in this matchup, but just generally, it's a very, very strong card. Mido looking like he's in a great spot now. So keep in mind, it might look like, okay, he, he, it's nine minutes 40. Mido hasn't even made a barracks. He hasn't made a stable. He's made two churches and he's lost one of them. What's he doing? Well, this is exactly what he's doing. He's just hanging out. He's got enough resources where he can call uh, Colonial Militia if he wants. He can call the big batch, he can call the small batch, and he can call Ward Gelders as well because he's just going to sell a little bit of food or or just, you know, reduce the amount of villages that he's got queued up right now. He's got four villages queued. I don't even know what he's doing. Is he going industrial? He could potentially be going industrial with this. I think he might be going for a fast industrial, actually. And now we see that Water Bottle User has reached the third age. I, I never actually realized Water Bottle User reached the third age. So despite doing that early pressure, he's gone up to the third age. Now going to be uh, bringing in the Falconets. Falconets going to be doing the heavy lifting here. Beginning to siege down the bank. Uh, I didn't pick that one up. We must have been looking at the home city when he went up to the Fortress Age. Mido's now reached the Fortress Age as well. So ideally what Mido's going to be doing is he's going to be waiting to call those Ward Gelders. Uh, and then he's going to be potentially pushing in. So the first bank going to be going down. Losing that first bank. Dropping down a barracks in the back of the base. Actually going up with the help it is. I didn't pick this up. Almost in all cases, the Dutch player is going to go up with that with the Exiled Prince. But Mido said, you know what? I'm not fussed. I'm going to go up with the... I think it's called the Sergeant at Arms. So Mido putting on uh, a little bit of an interesting show for us. House is going up in the back now. So keep in mind, he's got four banks here. The fifth one has gone down. And take a look at the town center. Look what it's focusing down. This, this Falconet is down to zero HP right now, and it's about to die. There it goes. That is the strength of the Colonial Militia. And now the Ward get Geld is getting called. We see them popping out the front, but they're just... They're, you got to wake them up. Wake them up. Get them on top of this Falconet. Falconet now going to get poked down by the long pokey sticks of the Ward Gelders. Ward Gelders are managing to tank a couple of shots of the Musketeers to the face. And we've got a huge batch of Colonial Militia getting called. 15 Militiamen in total. We don't see the, uh, the, the smaller batch getting called. We've got Reuters coming out from the south as well as a batch of, of Reuters coming in from the home city, potentially. Three skirmishes coming out to meet them and just absolutely overwhelming numbers right now from Mido. Nine Reuters coming out, going to be able to meet on the field. And Mido just looking in a ter in a, like a, a terribly dominant position, I'll say. Uh, the Ward Geld is on the front. We can see just how much they're tanking right now. 585 health, 30% range resist. Cleaning this up completely. Water Bottle user have, going to have to head back to the drinking fountain after this game, it seems because he's getting absolutely dumpstered by this beautiful composition from Mido. Really pulling it out of nowhere. The five Ward Gelders, the nine Reuters, the, the Barracks shipment, the Colonial Militia, the Halberdiers, everything just sort of popped at the same time. So some really nice stuff from Mido. Mido now sending in a thousand wood as well. So going to be able to invest in his, uh, his economy further. He did lose two banks here, but he's not going to be particularly worried because he's going to be able to rebuild them with that yeah. 1,000 wood and still have an extra 300 wood left over. Mido now in a, in a good spot. Explorer getting revived. Going to be moving into melee. Picking up a couple of strelets here. Making sure that the units aren't escaping. And Water Bottle User in a difficult spot. We take a look and see what's coming in. It looks like he's just got strelets being trained. These are just normal strelets. They're not veteran strelets, so they're not going to be able to one-shot these Reuters. 
Uh, Roida now going down, slowly picking off the militiamen on the back line. All of the strelots going down, but we've got some cavalry archers that are now reinforcing. I talk about this composition as a, as a good composition, a, uh, a, a very nice composition, once you can get your economy rolling. But we look at the macro from the Russian player. It's not the best. A thousand, uh, a, a thousand coins. So potentially sending in that thousand coin shipment, but just not using it, not really planning that out too well. Going to be making falconets. He already lost those two falconets that he sent from the home city. Going to be potentially sending in uh, the the, uh, the with the thousand coin. Going to be able to to make two more falconets. Sending in now nineteen strelots from the home city, making that falconet training strelots. So doing his best to just try and kite as best he can. Keep in mind these aren't veteran strelots; they're just normal strelots. We have a look over at Mido's perspective. He's got another shipment now. Dropping down that fourth and that fifth bank. So rebuilding up what he had lost in the early game. We move back to the fight and we see the skirmisher composition beginning to build with the Reuters. And at the same time, the Halberd is just slowly sieging down the blockhouse. Going to be taking it out, regaining control of the map. We see the eight skirmishers on the way from the home city. Plenty of space uh, when it comes to uh, population. And the Strelitz doing their best to try and to try and kill the uh, the Halberdiers. But moving them into cover mode, we can see that they're in cover mode just because of how much damage they're tanking. Barely even taking a scratch from the uh, the Strelitz. <laughs> Take a look at that. That's like that's ten Strelitz doing their best right now. It's finally picking down that uh, that Halberdier. We know that it's in cover mode just because of how low the stats are. We see the low stats here. It means that it's in cover mode, but it does take 50% reduced damage. I think in this position we can see the score starting to balloon out. I'm going to fast forward it just ever so slightly because I do suspect the game is going to get called relatively soon. Falconet now coming out. A single Falconet with some Strelitz from the home city. The Reuters is going to get on top of it. Are they going to enter into melee? They do indeed enter into melee. Reuters now on the back line as well for Mido escaping. Skirmisher mass going to begin to build on the back side. We've got 13 skirmishers up now for Mido. And at this point, Mido is miles ahead. Mido going to be sending in the thousand food and doing the double stable switch. So I'm going to slow it down and just talk about this. This is a cab switch that we often see from the Dutch player. So they send a thousand food. They drop a second stable. So we've got two stables now for Mido. We've got one on the front line as well as where is it? One down here on the south. So with this, he's going to be able to make large batches of uh, of hussars. So the, this batch here, he might not get out, but the next batch is going to be a full batch of 10 hussars and then with veterancy as well. He's going to have a whole lot of hussars that he's going to be able to get out. And this is going to absolutely clean up the army from the Russian player because he's not going to be expecting it. The Russian player is going to be expecting Skirmisher Dragoon and he's going to get Skirmisher Dragoon and a freaking lot of hussars. So we see that he's beginning to make more cavalry archers, though he's up to 10 cavalry archers now. Water bottle user doing a great job of, of getting back out onto the map, dropping down that blockhouse as well, reclaiming map control. Villagers moving forward, dropping down a second blockhouse as well. We don't see a thousand wood in the deck, so I'm not sure exactly where he's got this wood from, but needs to be careful now. It looks like a villager may potentially be going down. Probably going to lose all three of these villagers, actually. I don't think this blockhouse is going to manage to get up. He's got veteran Strelitz research now. Also, re also uh, sending in Strelitz combat, so a great upgrade for him. I don't think he's got boyers in just yet. No, he doesn't. That's an, a further 15% uh, attack and health. That uh, blockhouse going down preemptively, uh, as we predicted. Strelitz doing their best to try and ward off the uh, the enemy invaders from their lands. Doing a great job of uh, really just controlling the map. He's got a lot of resources back here. So we see villages down here to the south, as well as over to the west. There's a, there's a fair few hunts. So one, two, three hunts, maybe even a fourth hunt, potentially. So Russia's in a decent position. We don't see any spice trade in the in the deck, but we do have refrigeration that you can also always send from the home city. I'm a big fan of refrigeration, especially as the Russians, because you take a look, you see 25 villagers are on are on food right now. So that's going to affect or 26 now that we see 26 villagers with refrigeration. So an extra 20% on all of those. But now the Hassar switch has happened. We see that they're beginning to to enter in, and uh, the Reuters doing their best to try and pick off the cavalry archers. Hassar's looking for any kind of villagers, can't really find anything. And now the skirmisher mass is quite significant, moving in, picking off a first cavalry archer, second cavalry archer going down. He wants to be focusing down these cavalry archers with his skirmishers. That's exactly what he's doing. So take a look, watch how he focuses them down. For another one going down, a second one. And just keeping these Hussars focused on the, on the Strelitz. Watch the way the skirmishers are taking out the cavalry archers and a big more, a big double batch right now. It's going to be able to overwhelm the Russian player. Water bottle user is going to be in a difficult spot here. We already see he's pulling behind in score. 6k score. But these reinforcing batches of Hussars are what are going to be sealing the deal here. Mido now full population capped. 110 population. Minutemen getting called from the town center as well. Water bottle user down to 85 population. Doing his best to try and keep up with Mido. But Mido's composition is a very potent, quite strong. 
More Hussars now going to be able to clean up the veteran Strelitz, and that is the game being called, my friends. Let's go take a look at the post game. Very well played by Mido. I love the fact that he didn't make a military production building until like, what was it, 10 minutes? We'll have a look at the timelines, have a look at the resources gathered. So we see that Mido is, uh, you know, at, at, at 10 minutes, he's at 12,000 resources. Water Bottle uses able to keep up with him with that, that steel traps. He's obviously using a lot of crates to do that. We see him actually overtaking him for a very small while. And, uh, and Mido just pulling ahead. As soon as he gets that thousand uh, wood, he's able to get back ahead because he rebuilds those banks. We take a look at village account. We see that uh, water bottle user throughout that game was losing villages. Lost one, two villages. Mido losing a couple as well. Losing, I think, just that one villager that we did point out at about the 11 minute mark going down. Was it that one villager? Surely there was another one somewhere here. Those Cossacks. Shh, wait. Where, where, where did those Cossacks kill that single villager? Was that that surely wasn't 11 minutes when they they broke in and and did that I, I i think it must have been that he built a villager at the same time and and just stayed like slightly longer like here potentially and it, it just doesn't look like it uh we take a look at military unit population look at that pop from mido look at that pop from mido mido going from zero at uh at what is it at nine or roughly 10 minutes up to six and then boom baby up to 41 military population Managing to hold, eventually getting up to 44 and uh, and being able to absolutely destroy the Russian army. So good stuff from Mido. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this cast. If uh, you enjoyed the video, I encourage you to leave a like down below. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.